Hey guys, Melissa here. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made these herringbone weave wire rings. They're really fun and quick and easy to make. So if you want to see how I made these, just stay tuned and I'll show you how. Okay, so let's get started. I have made these rings in a video before, but that's when I was first starting to do this and I wasn't used to making things under a camera. And I had gotten a lot of comments saying I wasn't in frame and they couldn't see and had another comment asking if I can redo this video. So here I am. So for these rings, I used 20 gauge wire. So these happen to be coated wires. This is vintage bronze and this is titanium. They're both copper, but they're coated. And to do the herringbone weave, I'm going to use 26 gauge. If you want a bulkier weave, you can use 24 gauge. I also grabbed some beads. I've got a few 8 millimeter rondelles. I also grabbed some 6 millimeter bicones and it's March so I'm going to do an aquamarine. You're going to need a pair of pliers and some cutters. Also a ring mandrel and also I use a rawhide mallet to gently pound out my rings into shape. And my list of tools and materials is always down in the description so if you want to see that list go check that that out. I'm going to use vintage bronze first. I'll use that with the black and I'm going to cut off about a 10 inch piece. This will get you up to a pretty big size. Today I'm going to make a size 7. My 26 gauge, I'm just going to work off the spool. I never quite know how much I'm using. What you're going to do first, you're going to anchor it to your shank wire. You're going to go along top and bring it around a couple times. Just to secure it, I'm going to grab your chain nose pliers. And tighten it up. Make sure it's nice and snug. And then I'm going to snip my wire. So I only have about two coils. I don't want too much bulk at the beginning. Next, I'm going to feed on my bead here. Kind of snug that up nice to your coil and your wire coming out. You're going to swing that alongside the bead. Go over the top of your shank wire and go around once and snug that up nice and tight. Make sure everything's nice and tight and there's no gaps. Gonna swing it around and you're going to go alongside the other side of the bead. You're going to go over the top of the shank wire right next to your original coils and come out the other side. And then you're going to repeat that process. You're going to come along underneath your previous wire and then go over the shank wire nice and snug. Same with this side. Go underneath and then over the top. Underneath and over the top. Underneath and over the top. And you can make your weave as wide as you would like, depending too on how big your bead is. See, this is pretty deep, so and it's going to come down and come around your finger. So you potentially have this much space to weave. So just keep weaving until you're happy with the amount. Okay, I'm going to go back around again. 
I want to make them look even too. I'm not going to actually count. That looks like they're more even than if I stopped on that side. So I think that's good enough. So I'm going to go ahead and put a few wraps on to anchor this wire. And I'm going to cut it and kind of give it a smush with my chain nose as well. Now, if you're not in the center of your wire, you can move the whole bundle over now. Okay, now we're more in the center. Now you're gonna grab the ring mandrel. Now to decide what size ring you want, I wanna make a size seven. So what I do is I kind of wrap it around like a seven and a quarter. I just do a little bit, just a little bit larger, like right here. And I wrap both, can swing it around too. I wrap both wires around. I don't cross them and I bring them up. Make sure, figure out where you add on your mandrel. Still at the seven and a quarter. Pull them snug and you're gonna bring them alongside and kind of underneath your weaving wires. And these are gonna come along up the side. And what you're going to do is you're going to attach some next to your weaving wire. So now you can take it off the mandrel. You're going to take one side and you're going to gently feed it through and pull it. And pull it snug right next to the end coil here. And kind of pull that snug. Feed it through again. Try not to twist any wires. You can use your pliers to help. Before I go farther, I'm going to go to the other side and start doing the same thing. Bring my wire across and then through and pull it snug. Keep the wire straight. Kind of hard to keep everybody straight and twist the wire at the same time. Okay, so I think we're at the same point. I'm just going to go one more time around with each wire. See, I have a lot of wire left over. So now that I have about three times around, I'm going to snip it underneath on the inside of the shank at an angle. I'm going to press that down and tighten these guys up. And then finish off this guy the same way. One more time around. Nice and snug. Snip it off at an angle. You don't want them to have any snaggy ends. All right, and there we are. One last step is we're gonna put this right back on the mandrel. And initially it is like six and three quarters, but this is where my little rawhide mallet comes in handy. You can kind of tap it and make it the size you want. And also it makes your uh, ring shank round and work hardens it all at the same time. And also as I'm tapping this to get the shank bigger, my mandrel is tapered. So after a few taps, I'm going to take my ring off, flip it around and put it back on the mandrel and do the same thing. Tap it. I'll tap on the shank to work harden like I said and to get all the wires straight. Just light taps. I don't want to put any dents in or anything. All right, and I'm going to take it off, put it back on, flip it around. Flip it around, put it back on, and see now we're right at the seven, which is right where I want it to be. Alright, so there we are. Make sure our ends aren't poking. And 
and straighten up my coils. If your coils are crooked or slanted, you can grab your coil diagonally like this and give it a gentle squeeze and they straighten out like this one. I grab the top over here and then the bottom over here and just give them a squeeze and they straighten out. And there's a ring. I'll make another one really quick out of the silver titanium. I'll make one out of the six millimeter bicone and show you what that looks like. All right, this one, I did cut another 10 inches. I'll go for a bigger ring this time. we will make a size 10. So we'll see how much wire we have left over once we make our size 10. I'm gonna use 26 gauge again and go over the top, anchor it and snip it. I'm gonna slip on my bead. I like how the herringbone weave looks with the bicones because it has a sharp corner on it. So we'll bring it alongside over the top of the shank and around once and then around the other side and around the shank once. Back around the other side and underneath and over the top. Start at like 10 and a quarter. Bring my shank wires around nice and snug. Here's my ring. I didn't have too much waste on that one. So 10 inches gets you about a size 10, size 11, size 12. I don't think it'd go much farther than a 12. So if you need a larger size, then I'd just cut longer wire. All right, so here's a couple of them. I'm gonna make a few more. Yeah, these guys are pretty fun and easy to make. These little quick beaded copper rings, I sell for $10, fill a whole tray up and charge $10 a piece for them. Well, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know this video is a redo, so I'm hoping it's better than the original, but either way, let me know in the comments what you thought. Give me a thumbs up, hit the like button if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Have a great week and I'll see you next time.